It's me back again with my best friend. Hello everyone, good morning. Today I thought I would do a video that I wanted to do for a really long time. It's my everyday jewelry collection, that's what I'm calling it. No one requested this, nobody wants this video, but I just love the jewelry that I have and I'm very particular with the pieces that I choose to put on my body. It's like once an item of jewelry goes onto my body, it really doesn't come off. I mean, it does come off, but it goes back on the next day. Basically, what I'm trying to say is I wear the same jewelry every single day. One look at my Instagram, scroll down for a couple of years, I wear the same ring, most of the same earrings, the same bracelets. I definitely have strayed far from wearing sort of like statement jewelry. I wear a lot of everyday pieces that I think are really great quality and that I'm very passionate about, obviously, because I continue to wear them. This is gonna be a sort of informal, get ready with me? No, I'm, it's noon, I have my iced coffee, it's a beautiful day today, it's like 55 degrees in New York. I have some errands that I wanna go run and I was starting to get ready and I just thought, let me take you guys through my jewelry collection because I wanna talk about it and this is my channel, I can do whatever I want. Also, if you're curious, my current Starbucks order is my version of the toasted vanilla shaken espresso thingy. So you go into the app, go to iced espresso, you make a quad shot. I prefer the blonde espresso. My Starbucks didn't have that today, so I just did the regular. You say that you want it in a venti cup, add four pumps of the toasted vanilla syrup and a splash of oat milk, and that's what you got. And it's like $2 cheaper than like ordering the pre-made espresso. Anyway, let's get started. I guess I should start with my bracelets first because I've never taken them off. So they just stay on my arm. That means when I'm sleeping, in the shower, soul cycle, literally haven't taken them off since I got them. So the first one is this evil eye bracelet that was a gift from my friend Stephanie. She got it for me for Christmas, I think like two years ago. I wish I could remember the name. It's like a local Chicago jewelry designer. Um, I'm pretty sure it was a friend of hers. I will do a little digging if I can find the information. I will definitely link it down below. This is a good place to mention that I try to wear some form of Mati at all times. If you guys don't know, I am Greek. People always wonder what I am. I get Russian a lot, different Nordic things. I am like half Dutch and Swedish and Irish, hence why I'm blonde and as pale as the piece of paper, but my dad's 100% Greek, my last name is Greek. I definitely wasn't raised as like a good Greek girl. I'm not a good Greek girl. Like I speak maybe five words. I've never been to Greece. I didn't really start eating Greek food until I was an adult actually, so don't come for me. Like looking back on my childhood, I think the one aspect of Greek culture that was like very heavily ingrained in me is the aspect of superstition. I think that goes for a lot of like Eastern European and Middle Eastern countries. Superstition is like really important. And I just remember that's something that my grandmother probably like inadvertently passed on to me. Yeah, I've always been pretty superstitious and amati is the Greek word. I think it's also Turkish. Does anyone wanna let me know in the comments? I'm pretty sure Greeks and Turks have the same belief about this. But anyway, wearing an evil eye is obviously, I'm sure many of you know, intended to filter away bad energy from you. So if people are looking at you and they're jealous or they like hate you, you can kind of have a shield against, shield from the haters. And it sounds ridiculous when you put it like that, but you guys know what I mean. That's just one aspect of Greek culture that I've always really appreciated and ascribed to is the whole like superstitious aspect. So I used to wear um, a Monty necklace every single day. And then I was actually looking for a nice bracelet when my friend Stephanie got this for me. So I put this on the day she gave it to me and I've never taken it off. Does it look like I can really take anything off? No. Again, I'll have to double check what materials this is. I'm pretty sure it's real gold because it looks exactly the same as it did when I first got it. And like I said, it's been everywhere. It's been to Soul Cycle. I just, I don't take it off. I think I've had it for like two years. Okay, now this next bracelet is a different story. This is my Louis Vuitton Blooming Supple Bracelet. I think that's what it's called. My dad and I went have on this for my birthday. Wait, I know when. In 2019, in 2019, I bought this bracelet for myself on my birthday. Thank you, dad, for your contribution. I'm obsessed with it. I love it so much much. When I went to go try it on, I brought one of my friends with me. I was like a little uncertain if I would actually like it in person, but I'd kind of been lusting over it online for quite a while. So we went to the Louis Vuitton in Bloomingdale's. She came with me. I tried it on and she just said like, oh my God, Samantha, it looks like an adult charm bracelet, like a more adult version of like a Juicy Couture charm bracelet. And that was all I needed to hear. I was like, mm, I need it. I believe it retails for somewhere around... 
$600. Here's the thing, before COVID, I had more disposable income. I really just spent a lot of money on like stupid things. I was able to justify this purchase then. I don't know if I could now, especially knowing now how kind of not good quality it is. I still wear it every day, obviously, but let me show you guys if I can. It's a charm bracelet that has all of the little like Louis Vuitton symbols. There's even, if you can see a little LV there. I'm trying to get close enough for you guys to see how like tarnished it is though. So this is just brass plated. It's not like pure gold or anything. And yes, you heard me right. It is brass plated. It was like $600. It's Louis Vuitton. One thing that you have to understand about designer jewelry, they do have like nice quality pieces in their like fine jewelry section. And then they also have fashion jewelry. This is considered fashion jewelry. I put this on, actually Giselle did because again, look at my nails the day that I got it and I never took it off. I slept in it, I wore it to Soul Cycle. I wore it out every, I, I never took it off. And then one day, right before COVID started, I woke up, the bracelet was stuck to my body. So it had come off in the middle of the night while I was sleeping and it was like imprinted on my body. I started crying <laughs> and then I immediately contacted Louis Vuitton. Let me tell you, it took so long, so much back and forth. Me emailing them, them emailing me back. Oh, maybe this was like the beginning of COVID. Yeah, because I wasn't allowed to go into the store, I remember. Yeah, so this was during COVID. It was sometime in 2020. I wasn't able to go into the store. They made it just very difficult for me to speak with someone about repair. And like I was sending emails with photos and I have like a liaison at Louis Vuitton and it still wasn't an easier process at all. And then finally at some point they said like, you can come into the store, bring the piece and then they had someone like take very intense close-up photos and I was like okay I already emailed you photos so I don't know what this is doing but she sent them off and then someone from the repair team basically contacted me and said this is like normal wear and tear we won't fix it or replace it or anything and like I wasn't even really concerned about the fact that the plating had started to come off like I knew that that would happen that was you know my bad for wearing it every single day I was just more so like can you fix it like there was a tiny d-ring that it opened and I just wanted it fixed they were like no that process took like maybe three or four months. It was like most of the summer of 2020. I was like trying to deal with it. When I went home to Chicago that year, my dad and I went to a local jeweler by my dad's house that we used to go to when I was like a kid. Like my dad would get his watches fixed there or whatever. It's just like a random jeweler, okay? But it's like a family owned business and my dad has been supporting them for years. So we walked in, I showed them my bracelet and they were like, yeah, we can fix that. Like, what the hell? It's gonna be $15. Like, it was just so easy, and I was, like, kind of bummed that I purchased it from Louis Vuitton. Like, I didn't even buy it secondhand. I bought it in person. They don't care. They weren't just gonna make a tiny repair to it. So, anyway, I did get it fixed. I guess around the end of 2020, it was completely fine. I did ask them about replating it. They basically explained that the plating might not hold. Ugh, I'm gonna get into like really technical sort of jewelry speak now, but if you guys don't know, I used to work in the luxury watch and jewelry industry. I worked in the Diamond District in New York for like four years. I just have like a lot of knowledge about this kind of thing. There are certain types of gold or brass, obviously, that if you go to replate them, it may not hold the plating. So you might get it back and it might look absolutely stunning. And then after like literally a week or two, it'll go back to the way it was. Like it'll come off because it just won't hold. So they were worried. They were like, we don't want to do that. And then have you come back and say that it didn't hold. So we would rather just like not be responsible, which I understand. I didn't get it replated. I just got it fixed. It hasn't come off my wrist since then. So obviously they did a good job. Here's the thing I want to say about it because I do love this piece. And I know there are people that are probably going to watch this video and despite all of my warnings, they're still gonna wanna get the piece, that's fine. If you're someone that takes your jewelry off like before the shower and things like that, you probably will have a much better time with this than I did. But like all that being said, there are so many times this bracelet has like caught on sweaters or like I'm out and I'm just like acting a damn fool. And I think to myself, like I'm amazed that this is still intact and like looks fine. In a way, it really does withstand a lot of abuse by me. And I think it doesn't look that grimy. Definitely not from afar, but I just want to let people know, please be wary of designer pieces, especially if they're considered fashion jewelry. They're probably brass. They're probably not made with good quality materials. But all that being said, like I am just so obsessed with this. I just appreciate having something a little bit daintier to sort of like remind myself that I am mature. 
Now I'm gonna really quickly breeze through my earrings because I think I have 13 piercings, but I actually have 12 because one of my piercings ripped. If you are someone that is gonna be squeamish about that, maybe you should just click out of the video because I have a rip in my ear like a pirate. Okay, so all of these earrings I leave in. I try to always take out my first hole because the ones that I normally wear in the first hole are these from Love AJ. They are the baby Amalfi tube hoops. I actually own multiple pairs of them. These are, in my opinion, the best go-to everyday gold hoop. They're fairly inexpensive. I think a pair is $40. And also you can usually get them on Revolve or even Love AJ's website. They have like sales a lot, so you can use like a discount or whatever. I love Love AJ. I think they're great for everyday pieces that don't like tarnish. I think they hold up really well. I do take them out every night before I go to sleep and before I take a shower. I have been experimenting, I would say over the past couple of months with wearing other statement earrings in my first hole. Like I have these random ones my grandmother gave me. Sometimes I'll wear the larger version of the Love AJ hoops. If I really can't be bothered to wear a different sort of earring, I just put these in as my go-to. I am somebody that mixes metals. Let's just get that out of the way. I don't mind. I mix my metals. I think it looks good. I like it. But most of these pieces come in both gold and silver, so you could definitely get whichever you prefer. Oh my god, this is so weird. This is my left ear, and yes, this is the one that has the rip on the third hole. Most of my piercings are from Claire's. I know. This one cartilage that's crooked is from Claire's. God, I wish I had someone to film this for me. Problems with living alone. So this is called the Forward Helix, and this I'm pretty sure is the tragus. So these two were done at a piercing shop on St. Mark's Place. I used to have an amazing piercer. Yes, his shop was on St. Mark's or he like worked in a shop on St. Mark's, but I would always go to him specifically. He was amazing. During COVID, the shop closed down and I didn't have his direct contact info. So I lost track of him. But there's another piercing spot in Hell's Kitchen that I've gone to a couple of times to have them like switch out my earrings. So I will leave their information linked down below. If you're just getting something on your lobe, like literally just, I don't know, just like go to Claire's, like who cares? But if you're doing anything up here, I would say definitely go to a tattoo and piercing place. They take their job seriously and I don't think you need to go to like a specific piercing sort of place as long as it's a tattoo shop. They have a piercer. I don't know. I feel like in my experience they're really good at making you feel comfortable and they have like a good assortment of jewelry and they're pretty inexpensive. My Tragus was probably like 60 and my Ford Helix was probably like 70, something like that. I can do a video more about all of my different piercings and my experience with them but that's not what we're doing today. Let's just like talk about the earrings that I wear. Any of the actual like studs like you see that larger one there this tiny one down here this is my favorite piercing danielle bernstein who i like do not support whatsoever i think she's like an awful human but i used to follow her when i was young and stupid danielle bernstein had this piercing and i thought it was so interesting and i took a picture of it to claire's and they're like yeah sure we can do that so they added hopefully you can see they added a second piercing above my first in any of these places where you see like a stud all of the studs are from Sally Beauty Supply. That is my like secret. Maybe I should get diamond earrings at some point. I just have so many piercings. I'm like, I don't really need to do that yet. Seriously, these earrings I have sworn by since I was a kid. At the ice arena, like all of us girls, we would all wear these because they sparkled really nicely when you were on the ice. This is what they look like. If you have a Sally's in your area, definitely look for these. If I can find them online, I will link them down below. But these are stupidly inexpensive. They're literally Swarovski earrings. They're like $6.99, $7.99, something like that. And they come in actually different colors, but they also come in different sizes as well. I have like a larger one up here, and then I have the tinier ones over here. I always try to have a little bit of an arsenal of these at all times. If I ever want to switch anything up, I have. And then of course these two in the kind of more difficult spots, those are just from the piercer. Like I can't change those. Anything else that you see is from Love AJ. This is like their chain link earring. This is the chain link, but it's like a pave version, I believe. This tiny little hoop here is from Amazon. I used to get these tiny little hoops from Amazon. I will link them down below. They are good. 
good. Like they definitely withstand the test of time. You can wear it every single day without taking it out for like maybe a year and then it starts to look a little grimy. They're very inexpensive. They're like $14.99 I would say for a pair. I will leave them linked down below. But they're very difficult for me to put on and off because they are so tiny. I kind of stopped wearing these, but they are a good inexpensive option if you are someone that has a lot of piercings. So I will be sure to include those as well. I would say the majority of my earrings are either those Swarovski ones or something from Love AJ. Like this one is from Love AJ. It's sort of like a more unique shape. Sorry, this is very difficult to show, but I have so many pairs from Love AJ. And like I said, they're all pretty inexpensive. Anywhere between $30 and $40. Here's another Pave chain link one. I don't know. I just kind of switch them out whenever I feel bored with what my ears look like. But for the most part, I really do leave everything. I'll like switch them out every couple of months and then just like leave my new pattern. I'll change like which ones are a stud, which ones are a hoop. But for the most part, they just stay like that. And then I just focus on changing the ones in the front. Also, I have these from Fraser Sterling, which I've worn a couple of times. Again, only in the front hole. I also have these from Vanessa Mooney. Vanessa Mooney is another great place for jewelry. I used to wear their Alexandra earrings every single day, and then I lost them at Soul Cycle, and I never replaced them, and I left them in the locker by mistake. That was very sad. Vanessa Mooney has great earrings too, including this pair. It's like a heart, and they say, fuck off. The camera will ever focus on them. Yeah, they say, fuck off. I only only wore these once. I wore them to the club and I was like skipping around. They're just like the normal sort of hook earrings and I guess I was just flailing too close to the sun. I lost one. So if anyone ever found an earring that says fuck off at Butterfly Room, it was mine. But I don't think there's any question that of course it was mine. Summary is Swarovski earrings from Sally's are amazing. Tiny little hoops from Amazon I will also link down below. And then love AJ and Vanessa Mooney for the earrings that I wear in the front that I switch out depending on my look. Now let's move on to necklaces. I actually have been in the habit of not wearing a necklace at all for the past couple of months, I would say. So many times I would go to put a necklace on and be like, actually, I think this detracts from the outfit and I would end up taking it off. But I do own like a couple of sort of staple necklaces that if you go through my Instagram, you'll see I wore like 50 million times in a row. One of them is my return to Tiffany necklace. I believe I talked about this in my thrift video. I got this on the real reel for like 300 ish dollars definitely withstands the test of time you can wear it over and over and over again i never showered in it i definitely slept in it a lot it holds up very well tiffany has a pretty easy polishing service like you can just bring any piece that you want if you live by tiffany they polish it for you for like 10 15 dollars it's pretty inexpensive and they give it back to you in a new pouch in like a couple of days i feel like a classic silver piece from tiffany is like a nice thing to have this is a nice option again i just haven't been grabbing it lately so I'm not really wearing anything. Sorry, we had to change the camera battery. The other necklace that I used to wear to death. Honestly, I wore this before everyone else started wearing the knockoffs. It's the Vivian Westwood mini Boz Relief Pearl Choker. I think that's the name of it. I'll leave it linked down below. I started wearing this, I think at the very end of 2018. The reason is because Harry Styles started wearing a pearl necklace all the time and I wanted a pearl necklace. So I just like Googled what designers made pearl necklaces and I saw that Vivian Westwood did and so I bought it. And now if you literally go on Etsy or eBay or Depop, you can find so many people selling knockoff ones for like $20 and it makes me very, very sad. I have considered repurchasing it just because I really did love what it added to so many of my outfits. I feel like especially in 2018, I was really dressing like 2018, 2019, I was really dressing in like ultimate pop star anime vibes. Like I was wearing those platform boots that go all the way up and putting my hair in pigtails and like I really just I don't know who I thought I was I was really leaning into whatever aesthetic I had going on at the time something about wearing like a little pearl necklace was like such an interesting contrast to me. Like no outfit was complete without this. Actually, now that I think about it, I never took this off. I think I took it off when I would shower or go to Soul Cycle, but like I would sleep in it. I'm not really gonna show it to you that close up because it's disgusting. I don't think they're real pearls, but even like some of the stones have come out. It's very grimy and this is so dirty. If you were to put it next to a brand new one, you would be like, oh, that's like yellow and gross. I kind of just like wore this to death. And then I did start to notice at some point I was like, like, this is disgusting. You can't tell from far away, but when you look at it up close, you're like, ew. And when you think about like the perfume that you spray on and like whatever products you're using in your hair and it's so close to your neck. Ooh. 
gross. And this really, as far as I know, cannot be cleaned. I stopped wearing it at some point during the pandemic when I realized it was just really disgusting. Again, like everyone else was kind of wearing it to death. So I felt like maybe I should take a break from it, but I have considered like maybe repurchasing it just because it's like a nice item to have to wear maybe once in a while. And if you're looking to purchase something from Vivian Westwood, if you can purchase from either Essence or Farfetch or Luisa Villaroma, like a third party site, because Vivian Westwood's actual site has like kind of shitty customer service. They take forever to ship. Sometimes you don't get a tracking number. They're just like very unreliable. So I think it's better to purchase from like a third party seller who has the stock already there and has like better shipping. Selfridges is another place. So I have been considering either repurchasing this or getting like a pendant that has the little Vivian Westwood, you know, the Saturn thingy. You know what I'm talking about. So another necklace that I used to wear all the time. This was uh, quite a long time ago, but I still thought it was cool and worth mentioning is this Louis Vuitton padlock necklace. I don't remember who started doing this. Like I definitely didn't come up with this idea on my own. I saw someone else wearing this all the time and I was fully copying them, but I don't remember who. Maybe it was like Madison Beer. It was like somebody kind of random. I just love this idea. And if you guys don't know, you can buy just the padlocks. These are basically off of like purses or suitcases that people own and they literally just sell the padlock to people and you can buy it with the key. Where is my key? I got it from Etsy quite a long time ago. What I loved about mine is that the seller had a couple. They said what number was on the key because they all have different numbers that correspond to like the piece that they go with. Where is my key? Well, that's embarrassing. I don't know where it is right now, but it did come with the key so I could open it. It says on the key and then it also says very, very tiny, like right here on the bottom, 302 and that's my birthday, March 2nd. So when I saw that, I was like, oh my God, that's a sign. That's the one I have to buy. I'm pretty sure it was sold for like 45 or 50 bucks. I just put it on my own chain that I had and I would wear this like every single day. I love that sort of like repurposed designer detail. It was very heavy though and maybe it looking a little dirty. So I might clean that. That could be a cool, interesting idea if you're looking for something a little bit more unique to wear. Now that I'm looking at my necklaces, I feel like there's a few more that I should mention. So this is a my birth year necklace from Vibe Season. I'm a Vibe Season ambassador. I have a promo code you guys can check out. I'll leave it linked down below. I've actually been an ambassador with them for like four or five years, a really long time. I actually repurchased this necklace. I had it once, wore it to death. I would get it replated every once in a while. I have a guy in the Diamond District who would just replate my stuff for me because I used to work with him so frequently. Um, he would do it for free all of the time. You can basically bring anything like this to any jeweler and they will replate it and you can even say like I want it to be silver now because it is just like brass plated it's not any sort of gold but I think it still looks really nice and anytime it would start to look a little grimy I would just take it to polish and they would redip it for me this is my 1993 I used to wear this literally every single day definitely worth mentioning I also wore multiple Samantha necklaces that were from M Jewelers I love M Jewelers I also know one of the guys and he's like one of the nicest guys ever so obviously I always recommend them lastly I feel like I should mention this one because I used to get a lot of questions about this on my Instagram like back in the day This is my angel necklace from Dalmata. A lot of people would be like, what is that necklace? That's so cool I love it. Someone once asked me if it was a dog and I was like, no, it's a little baby angel This was so inexpensive. I want to say this was like $35. I don't think I've ever taken this to be polished or replated It still looks absolutely phenomenal. I love Dalmata. I think they're great small business as well that's my little baby angel. I have a couple of like staple necklaces that I might like rotate through every once in a while, but I don't know why, like I said, I've just kind of been naked up here for a while. That's just been the vibe. I don't know what to tell you. Let's move on to my favorite thing. I love my rings. I feel naked without them. I do wear the same rings every single day. These I do not wear in the shower. I do not wear to Soul Cycle just because your hands get so sweaty on the handlebars that I think it's like really uncomfortable actually. Otherwise, I wear these every single day. I love them to death. I have to talk about them. I have two Cartier rings. I purchased these both myself. I purchased both of them from Fashion Files. The first one I bought for myself as like a birthday present. I want to say in 2000, what would that have been? 2019. And then this one I bought around Christmas time. 
I think at the end of 2019. I think that's right. I'll double check. I have the Love Wedding Band, which is the thinner one. You can see that there. And this is in the white gold. I have both of these in a 52, which I believe translates to a six and a half. My advice to you is even if you're going to get your Cartier pieces secondhand, which I did and I have had a perfect experience with, even if you're gonna do that, I think you should go to the Cartier store, try them on so you know what your size is and know what width looks best on you. The Love Wedding Band is three millimeters and then the traditional Love Ring is five millimeters. It's having a hard time focusing, but it's obviously thicker. And I have the Love Ring in the gold and then the Love Wedding Ring in the white gold, right? Yeah, there is no such thing as silver. It's white gold, gold, and then platinum. And then you can obviously get them with diamonds, but that was just a little out of my price range. I believe these both retail for somewhere around like, I wanna say maybe 1200 and like 1500, something like that, but I got them on on fashion file in excellent condition like virtually no scratches like almost completely unworn for like 700 and like 850 I want to say so I have mentioned this before when I was talking about handbags but especially because I worked in the diamond district I would like very frequently liaison with people from Cartier from Rolex and Bulgari and like all of these really nice designer companies I was like very often working with people from the gemology Institute that is on 47th Street and just like different jewelers in the area we had like our own gemologist experts that like worked in our office I I feel comfortable buying jewelry, expensive jewelry secondhand because I know that I have so many different points of authentication. On top of that, one of my best friends, Sam, used to work for Cartier. So like when I got the pieces, I showed them to her and she was like, yeah, no, these are perfect. And I got them like with the boxes, all of the sort of like cards and everything that comes with them. Some people like feel like need the extra peace of mind of buying it in person at Cartier. If that's you, that's fine. But I felt like I had such an arsenal of people who could make me feel comfortable about my purchase that I was totally fine to do it on Fashion File. And you guys know I love Fashion File. I speak so highly of them. So I've had a perfect experience with these. They're very easy to polish, obviously. I think they're like the perfect accessory for every day. I kind of thought that originally I would wear them stacked. And I guess when I first got them both, maybe I did do that. I wear the same rings every day and I put them on the same fingers. I have the way that I like it and then that's the way that it stays. Okay, so here's the thing. I used to wear the wedding band on my middle finger and this was like the vibe. I really loved doing that. But then when I got the gold love ring, I decided that would go on the middle finger. The wedding band, I decided to put on my ring finger, but it's a little loose there. So what I do is I layer it, I stack it with this little like diamondy looking ring. That's from Amazon. This ring is fantastic. Amazon has a couple of like cubic zirconia rings that are just amazing. And I kind of swear by them. And I used to buy them for all of my friends as gifts because they would always say like, where are your rings from? And you know what's funny? A woman that I worked with in the office when I was working in the Diamond District, she literally said, oh, I thought that was a ring that like your boyfriend got you. Or maybe it was like passed down from your mother. I thought that was like her wedding ring or something. And I was like, girl, it's from Amazon. It was $14. I loved being able to trick people like that. These are a couple of the other ones that I have from Amazon. So I will try and link as many of these as possible down below. I think they're just great to have to like stack and layer with other pieces that you have. And obviously very inexpensive and they come in all different sizes and and different platings. I recommend those and that's all I really ever wear on my left hand. And then for my right hand, on my pointer finger, I wear my David Yurman quatrefoil ring. I literally bought this ring because Lauren Elizabeth and like five of her best friends all bought it for each other in like freaking 2014 or something. David Yurman was pretty big on like fashion Tumblr for a really long time, but I was never really sold with any of the rings. Like I never really liked any of them. And then when Lauren got this one, I remember thinking like, like, oh, that's a David Yerman ring that I would love to have. And it's fairly inexpensive. This was $4.75, I believe. I got it at the David Yerman in Bloomingdale's on 59th Street. I purposely got it a little bit bigger. I got it in a size seven so that I could wear it on my pointer finger. This was a gift to myself when I had a bit of an accident with my Tiffany rings. So I had two Tiffany rings from my college boyfriend. I wore them every single day. And then when we broke up, I decided I'm gonna keep wearing the Tiffany rings. Like I know that might be a little weird, but I was like, mm, these are my rings. Like I'm gonna keep wearing them, I don't care. But I think the universe was telling me that I needed to like get rid of the bad energy because one day I was at Penn Station and I was waiting for my train to go to Montauk. I used to go back and forth to Montauk every single weekend. So this was like just a routine sort of thing for 
for me that I was doing at the time. I don't know why I like never take my rings off when I wash my hands, but for some reason that day I took my rings off in the bathroom at Penn Station, washed my hands and didn't put the rings back on. And I was on the train to Montauk when I realized, oh my God, I left my Tiffany rings in the bathroom at Penn Station. Do you think I ever got them back? No. But was I like low key happy because I was like maybe the negative energy associated with my terrible ex-boyfriend and like that relationship, maybe it should have just been lost. Maybe that's where it deserved to live on forever in the bathroom at Penn Station. So when I came back from Montauk, I decided that that was the time I would go to David Yerman and buy myself a new ring to symbolize like a new chapter of my life. I've had this one actually the longest out of any of the ones that I'm talking about. I guess this would have been like 2016. I also really liked that the quatrefoil, which is a four leaf clover of sorts, does represent like luck. And I think if we're leaning into that sort of superstitious aspect of my personality, I definitely really appreciated that sort of symbolism. This ring is always on my pointer finger. It's not very ostentatious as I think a lot of the David Yerman pieces are with those like huge stones. They're very like, mm, they kind of look more cocktail-y and a little bit more gaudy and this is more appropriate for every day and I love it to pieces. Okay, finally, I have these two guys which I wear on my ring finger of my right hand and these are the Gucci Ghost rings by Trouble Andrew. They have the Gucci G's and then also these little like skull guys. Again, this was another Lauren Elizabeth influenced purchase for me. My college best friend works for Gucci, like Gucci corporate. She's like in charge of some menswear or something, something, I don't know. She gets like 40% off at Gucci. That's why I have these two rings. They're not that expensive though. I'm pretty sure one is like 200 and one is 250. So I feel like they're more reasonable as compared to like Cartier. I'll have to double check which is which, but they come in a small, medium, and a large. So the large is like even thicker. I'm pretty sure I have the small and the medium. They're very similar width to the Cartier. So I wanna estimate like five millimeter and three millimeter. They're sterling silver, okay? So comparable to like Tiffany's pieces. Pieces. If I can find a photo of what they looked like when I first got them, I'm gonna insert them right here. They were so clean and just like shiny and glistening. They looked beautiful. After about a week of wear, they looked like this like someone had basically keyed the ring. It very quickly turned into this sort of like grungy, scratched to hell thing. I showed it to my best friend and she was like, what the fuck? We immediately went to the Gucci on Wooster and we showed them and like two of the employees that worked there were like, oh yeah, I have that ring too. That's what it looks like. I was like, but it's sterling silver. None of my Tiffany's pieces have ever looked like this. And they're like, um, yeah, well, basically moral of the story, is they are silver and they are like theoretically like very good quality and very strong. It's a very malleable silver. Like I was kind of upset at first, but then I thought to myself like I basically got these rings for dirt cheap, so whatever. Once I got the second one to stack them, I had already anticipated that they would both end up looking like this and now they look fine and I don't really think anything of it, but there's sort of like a weird in-between period where like it's super shiny and it's starting to get slowly scratched and it really does look like you took your house keys to the rings and like fucked them up. And I don't particularly feel like it was anything that I did. I just felt like it was inevitable. And like I said, now that I know other people that have the rings as well, theirs look like this too. If you kind of like embrace the sort of like grunge vibe of it, I think it's fine. But I just wanted to put that disclaimer out there because obviously, like I said, I got them for a discounted price. But if I would have paid full price, maybe I would have been more upset. Just cause it seems like it wasn't something that I did. It just seems like like it's inherent to the piece. Hopefully you can see that a little better, a little more close up. Like I said, it's not awful. I just feel like it was worth mentioning because it really did throw me off when I first got them. But now I think it's fine. So this is the current lineup. This is really how it's been every day for the past like two and a half, maybe three years. Once in a while, I will throw on this ring that I got when I did a collaboration with Veramit, which is a really cool independent jeweler here in New York City. I collabed with them like years ago. I got this piece as part of the collaboration it says do not touch might be a little difficult to catch that but it says do not touch once in a while 
I will wear it here if I am just in the mood to like wear a ton of rings. I used to be obsessed with Pirates of the Caribbean. Like I literally wanted to be Jack Sparrow, sort of. In middle school, I would wear like a ring on every finger, but they were of course all from Claire's and kind of crappy, so my fingers would turn green. But sometimes I think Depending on how I'm dressing up, I find myself like wanting to call back to that sort of like piratey feeling. Maybe it's also because of the rip in my ear. And when I do get that itch to like wear a ton of rings, then I'll throw on this Veramete one as well and a couple more of the Amazon ones just to like fill out all of my fingers. But this is primarily what I wear every single day. And I don't really have any plans or any desire to add any more. I feel like this is enough. I love it. I feel super comfortable. I realized that I didn't even tell the story story of the rip in my ear. Maybe if you guys want a video on like my piercings, like a story time, my 13 piercings that then turned into 12. <laughs> I can do that. That seems like more niche content and this I just really wanted to focus on the jewelry itself. So hopefully you guys found that interesting, informative. No one requested this video. I just woke up and decided I wanted to do it. Actually, I've wanted to do it for quite a while because while I love experimenting with different brands and different trends, I'm always itching to like purchase more fashion pieces. Jewelry is so different for me. It takes me months and months and months and months and months and months to finally decide to purchase something. And then once I purchase it, it's basically on my body until it disintegrates. So I just thought it was worth going through and showcasing all of my everyday pieces. And I kind of like, we have like the Louis Vuitton, we have the Cartier, we have the David Yerman and the Gucci, which are obviously more expensive, but I'm telling you guys, like most of my earrings are from Sally's. My stacking ring is from Amazon. We have a sentimental sort of piece here too so I'm proud of it I have a nice little mix going on yeah if you guys have any more questions about any of the brands that I mentioned if you want to see a piercing video leave a comment and let me know like how I should go about doing that I don't really know what exactly people would like to know but I'm fine to talk about it I've had this rip in my ear for eight years now I have no intention of ever getting it fixed I love it it makes me feel like a pirate or like a wolf that has been in a fight. Anyway, that's it for now. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you are not already. Leave a comment down below of a video that you would like to see from me. Also, please go find me on Instagram. That's where I post the most. Um, also, my TikTok and my Twitter are linked down below and my SoundCloud, my Poshmark, my Depop, my Like to Know It, where you can shop some of my outfits. Until next time, bye-bye. Bye kisses, goodbye.